Hi everyone. I'm just going to pop that up a fraction. There we go. Move it back. There we are. Okay. Um, I'm just going to just reiterate sort of what we did the other day. Um, so I'm waiting for a few people to hop on and I'll just make sure I can see comments. Um, last week we um, did some strip piecing. So that way, lengths of um, colour and then I cut them on a 45 degree. Hi Annie, how are you going? Um, which of course gave us these. Then I cut them that way which created these little fellas. Now I just sort of cut them any old way because I thought this can be um, some serious triangles in training. Hi Karen, hi Debbie. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I also made up a whole heap of these, which are, hi Judy, how you going? Uh, one inch strips uh, folded in half and they are going to create my faux piping that I've got here. You can see here, okay? So it is no way perfect and I'm happy with that. I actually like it, I like the colors and I've heard the calling of everyone saying, can you please put some colors together for us? Yes, I'm going to do that. I'm currently in the process of folding up. Oh my gosh, um, I'm putting a whole heap of fabrics onto bolts. I've run out of bolts now. So I'm taking some fabrics off bolts. Um, yeah, the gang's all here. Hi Christine, these panels are beautiful, um, they are, yes. So um, I thought that um, I might give it a break and today I can also do some um, of this and show you because I said last week that I would, so here we are. Now um, I don't mind that I have different and they're not touching each other and stuff because I think that the the funky triangle the you know the faux piping the fake piping i think that just gives um you know terry gives us gives it something it just makes it more relaxed rather than being it you know it has to be a point and it has to be all perfect i think this makes it a little bit more relaxed a little bit more fun um great for kids because then they can see how easy it is to put something together it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and it still looks amazing so and I think the colors have a huge thing to do with this so I am going to do that it will probably be in batiks because I literally don't have much or any of these left at all even that blue I don't have um, so I'm sort of looking for colors that are very similar hi Maria how are you going <laughs> I can see you back yes so after doing that, I'm going to do the next one. Now, obviously the next one that I'm going to put here is not going to have this edge border that's going to butt up against there. After I put these ones, there's two top ones, top and bottom, borders are gonna go on, the faux piping is gonna go on, and then my third one, it will be all around like the first one. Okay, so to get started, You've got to have your little faux piping. My daughter took away my pins. She went sewing with my mum <laughs> for a couple of days and I lost my pin cushion. So now I'm going to have to make myself a new ear. I've got the magnetic one, but I've been using that with all my um, other stuff. So I have four of these. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm literally going to sew that one eighth of an inch from the edge. Um, all the way across these um, panels I've actually cut back into them a little bit hi Eileen um, I've cut them down to 12 and a half uh, I think it's 12 and a half inch square and the long panels have been cut back to 40 and a half by 12 inches so um, you do lose a little bit but I, I don't think it really matters they still look good so um, yeah, so I'm going to just move the camera over to the sewing machine, show you what I'm going to do with these, and then I'm going to cut some more of these to the, uh, the uh, triangle shape so that you can see them. I've also been grabbing my little scrap bits like these 
and you know slowly but surely just joining them together to make like this so you know I've, I've just been pinning them ready to go to make more little strips so um so that I don't waste much you know so you don't want to be wasting them if you can avoid it uh, so what we're going to do is going to go over, going to sew some of these together. And like I said, the beauty is we're not joining any points. We're not worrying about that. We're just getting it done. Hi, Kath. How are you? Hello. 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 Um, so let's take this over to the machine. I will grab, move this and I'll grab the camera and I'll just turn it around here. Grab my chair. Now, I've just got all sorts of cords and stuff here. So let's move this over here and let's see how we go. Um, hi, Pat, how are you? Um, now, let's see how we go getting this so that you can actually see what's going on. Let's zoom in a little. Let's move that up there. Pop it over this side, hey? Zoom in a little bit more and we'll put it there and that should hopefully make it easier for you to see. I don't have much of a bobbin left so I know that it's going to go, mm, no, not playing today. Um, and I don't have one, oh yes I do I already have one filled because I'm using a pre-wound. I have done so much sewing with that bobbin ready to go. So... That is Fabo. How much do I have up there? I have plenty eyeballs on. Maybe they don't fog up on me. Um, yeah, wet and cold here. <laughs> it's um, yesterday was a bit sunny. It was lovely. So first things first, I've got a few of these little fellas, and I'm just going to start putting them together. Just grab my magnet here. Uh, so I'm going to start sewing them together. And like I said, I'm just getting them together. It doesn't matter um, whether they've got a seam in them or not, like a, um, a join in them or not. And I'm just moving my needle over. I'm getting it to my quarter inch position, which needs to go all the way over there. Oh, I bet you it is. We're not allowed up there yet. <laughs> all right. Okay. And if you haven't already noticed, I do like to do a bit of chain piecing. So I tend to grab one after the other. I'll make sure I can find my little scissors too. I reckon I've buried them amongst everything else. I'll, I will, at the end of this before I go, show you the rest of this broom at the moment. It's an absolute fight. few seams there I need to join that one so bit of an issue there we go so I hope you guys have at least given it a try I, I bet it's freezing up your way freezing here yeah it's freezing here it's cold I wouldn't say not icy cold but it's cold um not to the point where I'm, I don't even have the heater on in the room at the moment. I'm, I'm sort of, I might have to put it on soon. It's starting to get later in the day. Um, so all the, the threads that you had, you guys ordered and any that were on back order are coming in. If I haven't sent your items to you already, um, they'll go in your next order. Um, sorry, they'll go in, yeah, they'll go in um, for next week's delivery. Um, that went a bit crooked, that one. I might just have to have a quick squeeze at that. Yeah, we'll line her up. She'll be right. <laughs> um, those who have a few back orders, and I've still sent the majority of everything, and there might be one or two threads, like I think Pat's. So, you know, that, that those those couple of threads I'll throw in with the next one once they come in. They're pretty good with their deliveries. Um, wonderful. They sort of, they don't bugger around. They just get onto it. 
<laughs> Hi Stella, how are you love? Um, so this, if you don't know already, is called chain piecing. Um, I'm, like I said, not really fluffing around with um, measurements and stuff. I don't really want them to be straight and I don't want them to be on point with each other. I'd rather them be a little bit funkier. Um, I think it adds a bit of interest to it. And I did like my triangles in training comment the other day. Oh, yeah, I've got scissors. So I'm just going to trim these apart like, like that, just take them apart and any others that need joining still, I'll whip them underneath the needle. Um, that one needs some, you can see they're like, it's like a chain, they're like all joined. I just feel like something landed in my hair then, I don't think there is anything flying around at the moment, but that one. One needs doing. It's got more seams, more seams, more seams. And another seam. So there's still a couple. But this this avoids and, and that way too, you know, there's no real um they're not in colour order either, which is, is good. Then it all matches in. <laughs> it's nothing's in order. Nothing's straight, nothing's in order. It's all good. Really throws out the OCD, doesn't it? I can see there's about 23 people on today. I don't know what else you've got to plan today. You guys, visitors up in Queensland, you'd have to have visitors in that now. Be all happening. And New South, you'd be able to travel a little bit to Queensland and South Australia and all that. You lucky buggers. It's a bit sad that we've got a minority I'm not sure could do it that way <laughs> oh Stella it's so much more relaxing honest to god and you've really just got to look at it and go you know what it's it's not about the perfection it's not about that you know tutor or teacher in the background saying no you can't have it that way it's about just enjoying what you're doing don't don't panic I mean if you want to do them and they're all perfect go for it um, but me, I'm, um, today I'm with this quilt, I'm wanting to make it as cute and funsy as I can without the stress. So it's a stress-free um, triangles and stuff because triangles can be really quite um, hard to deal with, hard to work with because they're um, on a bias and uh, they don't always play nice. Yeah. I am, um, and one thing I do notice when I'm quilting people's quilts, triangles are where the majority of the stretch will be. Like if, if people are doing any kind of um, adjusting in their quilt, if they try and do it around where the triangles are, that's when it all goes south. All right, so I'll just trim those off. It's a shame that you guys have to go backwards with the lockdown, but. Don't come visit me. <laughs> um, what's this say? Coming. Um, Karen, going to Cairns on the 20th of July for five weeks. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Hopefully they... Oh, look, you know, it's the small, a couple, a few that have made it hard for everyone else, but... We live and deal with these things. All right, my bobbin is so almost done. And rather than fight it, there's my bobbin. And that's using the pre-wound. I've pretty much used the whole thing. There's not much left. I'll get a new one if I can find the start of it. That would be super awesome. It's hard to see because um, it's black. I'll just do some scratchy things. Play some elevator music while I'm here. Um... 
Yeah, I think until we get a, a vaccination, this is this is the way we're going to live for a long time. I'll find one that's a bit easier to grab. That end of this one. I can fight with that another day. There we go. Um, went to what's that say? Um, went to a yarning group this morning where I got a lot of my granddaughter crochet bound that I've done only twenty people to be there. I need eggs, but oh bugger! Sorry, don't come visit me either, please. Would love to see you, but not yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh look, I'm actually going to. Um, I haven't talked to Mum yet about it, but um, I think I might organise a bit of a road trip with Ma. Last time we did a road trip, we went all the way to um, Longreach. We drove. We went all the way up inland and then all the way back. But I'm going to wait until all this stuff settles, of course, because um, I'm not going to uh, stress out anyone. All right, so I'm just going to lay this on here because I have very few pins. And I'm actually going to do, like I said, one eighth. So I need to move it under my foot a little bit further. And um, just so long. Oh, a little bit fast there. Um, the reason why I'm doing one eighth is because I just want to hold it there temporarily until I um, sew it in with the border. It almost looks like one sixteenth, it's that close. So what I'm going to do is, lucky you, Michelle, I just realised you're not in lockdown. No, I'm not. No, no. Um, I think you will have a long time to plan your... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will. Look, I don't mind. Um, we're not in lockdown like some of the places in Melbourne um, at all. Um, we're, we're a bit further out and thankfully we haven't had that yet. I have heard of one case that was close to our area, but... That's it. So whether that was a visitor or whether it was someone who lives here, I'm not too sure. And it doesn't really matter as long as they got onto it and it's not spreading. So I'm doing top and bottom because that's just the way I do things. Some people do sides and then top and bottom. I tend to do top and bottom and sides just the way I do it. Done it like that for I don't know how long. Either way, it will work. All you do is cut off the end of it. You can cut it off with a blade if you so feel like it, or you can do what I just did. Um, so, yeah, Robin, Robin would be in um, lockdown, aren't you, Dale? And um, your poor love. And I know that my stepdaughter's in lockdown. I know there's quite a few people and it's frustrating as it is. It's probably necessary at the moment, I think. I don't want it to get... No, if they, if they don't do it now, it's going to end up in the, all, over, all over the country again. No. We've got, we don't want to be just like... Um, you don't want to be like Florida or whatever it is or New York. Crikey. Okay, so enough COVID rubbish. Let's um, talk. Let's keep sewing. So I ha am literally just sewing and it is, where is the, yeah, there it is. You can see it is very close to the edge. Uh, turn it over that way. There we go. Okay. Yes, but getting used to it now, my poor machine is blowing smoke. <laughs> it's overworked. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah. I don't mind being at home. It doesn't bother me. It just means that, you know, I'm not travel. I do love to travel. I am a bit of a travel bug. I get that bug in me and I want to go. <laughs> um, but, you know, when I stay home too, well, I can't um, and I've got no choice. I just do it, you know, just, um, I just deal with it. So I'm just roughly cutting them off because they are going to go in the seam. Just turning it around. 
at home sewing all the time. Mine is, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I love it, Stella. Um, I actually went and bought myself a new lawnmower the other day. Um, needed it because the one we've got is probably about 30 years old. It's as heavy as lead and... You know, not all things can be done on the ride on because we've got the property, so to speak. So I am, um, and I've nagged at the husband that many times. So I went and spent money and, and bought a lawnmower. He did get upset and I just said stiff. <laughs> and it has really kept me sane with the craft shows too. Yeah, Stella, I find that a lot of people are really enjoying having that interaction with their... They're um, quilters, quilting groups and, and shows and the shops and, you know, tutors and all that sort of, th sort of stuff. I think it's really um, keeping people healthy mind-wise, yeah. So anyway, I got home and I decided, right, I'm going to mow the lawn. And guess what? It's a button start. It's, it's, it's a push start button, bink, bink, like that. So no pulling, no pulling the bloody whatever they call that thing the choke thing or whatever it is i don't know what it's called anyway none of that no ripping my shoulder out of my arm i just press the button i love mowing the lawns i actually really enjoy it so i spent an hour or so mowing mowing the lawns and it looks much better all righty so i've got those on there you can see there i have sewn some of these together already enough to go across the top so i'll just lay that across here there so I might zoom it back out. I'm kind of watching. I'm in foster with the family. Oh, foster. Oh, you've gone for a travel? Cool. I'll be back later. Just have to go for a while. No worries, Judy. So that one there can go there. What I'm going to check before I finalise my choice is just make sure that this one with the wombat doesn't have the same colours. See how that would have been the same colours sitting next to each other. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do that one. I just don't want two of the greens sitting next to each other. They are. That's as fussy as I get today. So I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to lay it there, lay it there. And guess what? It doesn't matter if I've got a full block. See, look, it's going to finish off halfway through a block. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yes, I know. There's some, I can see some OCD issues going on. All right, so I'm just going to lay it there. You can pin it if you like. I'm going to do a normal seam, and I'm doing the top and bottom only, no sides on this one. All right. Oh, nosy is itchy. All right, so. There we go. Move it along. No, I think I'll have to go that way. Bit of a bump. And that one there. How nice is it not to have to wind a bobbin, you know, undo your thread and yada, yada, yada. That was really good. <laughs> I know someone bought, um, oh, I think someone was thinking of buying some. Um, pre-wound that made it really really easy all right so go to about here and cut off then turn it around and we'll do the other side um, and just before I do commit to that again I'm checking it's a gray and blue one so I don't want a gray and blue one at the end so I can put this one there and just line her up there just put that there like that. You can see I've done some unpicking. <laughs> Reverse sewing. There we go. Yeah. Pick that up. Just a bit of a tweak. And to the next spot. The only thing is, is that when I go away and I don't, I mean, I take knitting and stuff, but I miss my sewing machine. <laughs> I miss my long arm. 
I'm like, seriously, I've got two weeks here away. I'm loving every moment of it, but I'm running. I want to do stuff. You know, I want to create things. Um, so I do get that. I do miss it. Um, a bit of a buckle there. I'll see if it came. I can iron that out. Oh, yeah, no, that'll be all right. A bit of a tweak. All right, so now we're going to take this over to the table, trim, and I'm just going to turn the iron on and give it a very, very, very light press because I don't want to stretch anything. So I'm going to move you over to here. And bring my chair over. All right, so... Okay, I need to put my iron on. I've got one of my little irons. I've only got one little iron and I've got a big iron. So I've got my pop-up one and my little fella. So I'm just straightening out the cord because it's all twisted. Um, there I Put that there. Oh, I uh, Michelle, when okay, when you do the bleach work, do you use uh, a sort of retardant around the bits you paint? Yeah, so I use what they call is it's a resist. They call it a resist, and I use that. So that that stops it from um, a gouda is what it, a resist is. G U W T A, and I use that around. Um, on the actual parts that I don't want to have um, bleach going past. <laughs> I was just reading um, Bella's. Um, d yeah, well, see, I'll be going with mum. So, so I don't reckon mum will be. Oh, she might join me. <laughs> it's, it's, I suppose it'll work. Now I've just got some threads here I've got to pull out. I'll have to unpick them. I'll get to them later. That's no big deal. Uh, do I show you what my my little gorgeous terrier did to my look at that? My unpicker. <laughs> she got into it. Little booger. So I'm just gonna take that out. That's just a big stitch there. I had another one there it is so when I've unpicked them and stuff I've been left with a few extra threads hanging there just pull them out so you can see that it's a bit like loose in here so if you don't if you don't actually quilt in these areas here um, yeah <laughs> elegant yeah I take a container of paper pieces yeah we'll see all I've got and I think if I do if we do get to do this I will actually take I've got um, a half inch hexi that I've been doing for about seven years <laughs> um well, about four years and um I might take that with me and literally just sit there and do that because I can sort of travel that anywhere and it's not heavy and cumbersome or anything so all right so just going to move that over there yeah so these because they're a panel you, you know you've got it you you really have to sew around these otherwise and, and in here otherwise they end up all puffy um, so I need to cut these end bits off and just you know straighten it out make it look right um, so I've got my small ruler my blade and I'm going to be so, so careful, not, and just trim that off. I'm using the seam this time as my straight point. Oh, I need to change that blade. Um, yeah, that, one's, that one's going to be an issue, but we'll deal with that when I get to it. So no matter what border you decide to do here, what's the days? whether it be straight borders or whatever, you, you do need to um, just make sure that you don't stretch anything as you go because 
panels will stretch. They are, and I can tell by looking at this, that it's wider in the center. You can see wider in the center than it is on the ends. See how that works? So we would have to bleach, like starch that out there, just get it to stay out. So I can do that, that's Snow Dramas. That one again, see how it's not? But because we've got some triangles, we can actually get them to stretch a little for us. The seam won't stretch, but the, the triangles will. And that will help bring that back to the size it needs to be. See, see how it's coming in? So it needs to be like that. They need to be the same as the center. Okay, does that make sense? Can you see that? You can see how they come in. And that's not uncommon and you know, it just, it happens. So it happens to the best of us and we just deal with it and move on. But the thing with this is I need to do it now because I want to join this to my next one. Is it freezing for everyone else? Yeah, it is, it's cold. Um, so I'm just going to get my um, starch. Um, and I might just move those out of the way. And my poor run picker. I've got my mat folded over twice so that it doesn't wreck my plate. I'm just going to move this camera so you guys can actually see. Oh, there we go. A bit far away then. I felt lonely. All right. So I can see that that needs to straighten out like that. You need to straighten it out because it's, it's concaving in. So I've got a bit of starch on. Well, best press, go to the other side. Yeah. Just Melbourne feeling sorry for itself. Yeah. Nice in Bundy, hot in the sun. Oh, yeah, I bet it is. Yep. I actually, um, we had a really nice day here yesterday. It was really, really nice. Um, and uh, I did get some bits and pieces done. So always with a dry iron. Never use a, star a starch with a steam iron. I'm just going to turn it around so I can get a, a grip on the little darling. And I'm just slowly tugging it outwards at the same time. And because I'm not doing the OCD thing, it don't matter if they've got a bit of a point on them because it's not meant to be nice and straight. It's meant to be nice, but not straight. So they can have wonky seams. They can be a little bit off. It's all right. So I'm just gonna quickly check that. Well, there you go. Look, I just got that to meet the sides. Okay. So I can still give it a little bit more. That's pretty good. That's really good. So I'll just give a little bit more. Just a little bit more of a shove. There we go. Nice. Now we do the other side. Same thing. So I can see by looking at it now that it's actually you know, looking like it comes out a bit now. So I can actually take a little bit of a trim off there if I want to. Now I've done that. And if you notice, I've let the starch just sit on it for a minute. That is really helpful. Um, just let the starch sink into the layers of the fabric. It does make a big difference. And I'm just slowly stretching, just a little bit at a time. No massive big pulls and yanks forward. And I'll just turn it so I can see it. Flip that up. So it feels nice and crisp. And just move that over there. And you'll see 
all of a sudden I've now got that and that one meeting that meets there in the center nicely and this one does too and that's just using a bit of starch so see how they're now meeting at the ends at the sides so I could give that a bit of a trim this way because it looks like it's kicking kicking out like up like that um, and I'll do that later won't worry about it now um, but yeah they, they are sitting nicely so that's how you get them to sit and play nice so the next step we're going to do just move the iron out of the way that's why I love starch but there's a right and a wrong way to do it that was the right way <laughs> All right, next one, which I haven't starched this one, it seems to be working okay without it, is this one. Now I do have, down here, I have a green and a green, but it's not a full block, so it's just going to sort of look like it's taking a bit of a corner, and I'm okay with that. Um, I might even just starch that side one, just so it sits nice and stiff with this one so pleasant that this happens to others so <laughs> please oh yeah glad to know how to fix things yeah that if you've got triangles that's how you fix them you want to you want to fix them using steam and water loosens the seams of, and the and the fibers of the fabric and will make them stretch so definitely no steam only uh, dry iron and a bit of best press and you will get it looking schmick so I'll just give that a little bit of a thing. And it's always nice with um, with uh, any kind of um, starch. This starch is good. It doesn't leave that white um, smoky look, you know, on the seams. Like it doesn't leave that, that, star that shiny thing. Um, but it's always nice to um, have triangles in that starch. It's good to do it too um, before you cut them. It's always, especially if you're about to cut them on a bias, it's nice to um, starch them first. So, got some bulky seams, so I'm just going to press them down. There's one there, nasty. And then that. And helps to make everything just look a little bit. nicer nicer so and that shows me too because i've got it sitting really really flat now um i like the brown beeper what the brown who oh peeper <laughs> sorry <laughs> we're learning little tricks along the way yeah <laughs> So the peeper, yeah, a little, a little, um, although faux piping or peeper, whatever you want to call them, yeah, they're, they're good, aren't they? They just um, breaks up that all that colour against that colour. It just creates like a, a border without a border. Um, so this is a little bit creased in there, here and there, but, um, you know, that'll, that'll get quilted to death, so it won't matter. Um, there we go. So now I know with this one, I can look at it and I look at this straight down here and I can see because I've starched it and you'll be able to see it on camera that that is sitting out. See how it's sitting out? So if I get my handy little ruler, you can see oh, I'm going to sit that on two and, uh, two and three quarters. There we go. There it is. And you can see it's sitting out quite a bit. So I am going to take that off because otherwise it'll just keep getting worse and worse and worse as I go out. This is where, once you've had a bit of a starch, this is where you would definitely trim off that corner up there, as long as you're not overly stressed about. Um, obviously that triangle doesn't look any different, so it actually looks a bit cleaner. So I'm just going to come down here. I can see there's one down here in the corner that needs to go. Just take that out, just so that I've got a nice straight edge to work against. So I need a new blade now. I'll put a new blade in the other one, um, and uh, haven't done it in this this one. Alrighty, so that one there is now going to go against the kangaroochie. So 
so I'll move this down here you can see just fold that up there we go so that is going to go against there look at that that's going to be just like a bought one so I'm going to sew that to that now all I have to do is flip and you'll notice I'm not lining up these things if you want to by all means line them up but I can tell here with this one that if I line that up it's all going to sit in roughly okay if you're wanting it to not be lined up then you can move it up a bit you're going to have to add a border to here and a border to there to make them off center we're just going to go with this I'm thinking that because I've done the correct thing with the original pieces of cutting them at 12 and a half that they're all going to sort of sit roughly where they should so just doing those ones yeah they look pretty as far as the eyeball is concerned yeah got a bit of a rough border there that's because um see it's got turned over bits i haven't fixed them up yet and i'll do that now before i take it to the machine um <clears throat> I'm just wondering whether I press that seam. No, I'll press it this way. It's a bit bulky, these seams. Um, I probably should press them the other way. I'm thinking this way is going to create issues. Um, just let me have a quick check on it. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to go this way. What's this one doing underneath? Yeah, that one's that way too. Yep, I'm going to change that and really upset my apple cart and go like that. Might even just give it another little starch. Sorry, but I'll have to do everything up. I'll try not to do another. Sorry, 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 but I'll have to line everything up. I'll try not, but it will end up. OCD. <laughs> That's okay. You can do the OCD thing. I'm okay with that. It'll look better than mine. Just won't take it personally. <laughs> I'm really here just to give you the ideas, just to throw them out there and see what you do with them and 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 answer any questions you've got. If you've got any questions about it or you know um, anything at all, anything like that. So I'm just going to turn that back. That's better. That's better. That's better. Now I'll just make this one do that too. Oh, that one seems to be going all right, so I won't disturb it. All righty. So let's do this. So I don't have any pins next to me. So I'm just going to do this. And do this. Line up that little boogaloo. Flip. Um, you'll have seams to join up because if you're lining everything up your seams will line up and you'll be able to butt them together the correct way so I'm just getting those two there that will help make these all sit nicely all right I've got some seams that have flipped over but you know what who cares all right we're going to go back to the machine did you find any fat quarters to match the panels to do my quilt Pat, yes, I have. I have to mix it up with some batiks and stuff like that. I'm going to make up, um, when I put that that um, sort of comment about it the, uh, yesterday, that I'm going to make up a couple of packs of them. So, But because those solids are no longer including this blue, but I have found a nice batik that is very, very, very similar, but it's just a batik. So um, colours will be similar. Um, but not the same so hopefully that will be okay for you um, I can show it to you there's no um, like you don't have to buy them I'll just send you a photo of what I've got and then you can you can choose and say yes or no all right so let's take this to the machine so we can actually sew these together I'll move this over here Ugh. and I've got this at my machine I'll just move it over high so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just going to, and yeah, I'm putting a pin in it. It is 
going in only because I want to keep them reasonably even as in the panels in between like these ones um, I don't I don't want them perfect but I just want them to look reasonably close to each other as in parallel all right so then I'm just going to grab that line her up underneath there quarter inch seam and I'm going to run it run it down the side don't be chewing me thread come on speed up just stop there, I was about to drop things. Line up the edge, off we go. See, by pulling and, and stuff on triangles, that's how you rip them out of shape. Um, your best thing to do with any kind of triangle is um, not to, <laughs> because uh, that's when you have them coming out with a little pointy dog ear and stuff so you, your best bet is if it's not going to work is either deal with it or do another e. that by pulling and you know manipulating and all that sort of stuff all that's going to happen is you're going to create those those dog ears like, you know I showed you before how it comes out on a point um, so if you haven't starched your fabric to begin with that is going to happen. You're going to get it no matter how gentle you are, you are going to get movement. Um, starch will help prevent a lot of it, um, but it will still happen. Alrighty, so I'm just having a quick squeeze. Yeah, we got there. Yeah, that'll be do. That'll do. Let's go to the next one. So I'll bring you back over here. And uh, okay. Blind man would love to see that. So we'll turn it over. I want to press it so it goes. I might just turn it over this way here. And I'm just going to do a little starchy starch. And I want to just push that back because it needs to go the other way. There we go. And stay where you're supposed to stay. Just going to turn her over this way. And me is thinking that it needs to go like that. And just a bit of finger pressing. Back. Making sure I've got that seam going in the right direction. And get it to there. Just throw a little bit of heat on it. Making sure that that's in the right direction. Yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty bumpy because of all the points, the joins and everything. But you're going to get that with any kind of you know, triangles or, you know, tiny little squares and stuff like that. You're going to get that, um, lots of seams coming into one area. Um, and you see it's a little bit wonky down here, but we're going to trim all this up and make it reasonably straightish. I'm all right with that. All right. So... My little paper got a little bit thin there. We'll just give her a tug. All right, so I'll move that out of the way. I'm having fun trying to quilt. Had it, trying to quilt. Had a AI accident last week. Had surgery. Now blind in one eye until I get. Oh my god, a cornea transplant! Oh my god, Lynette, you poor thing. That's awful. I couldn't think of anything worse than losing part of my eyesight. It would be one of my worst fears. So, I'm just standing up. I'm going to just line this up. I want them to be reasonably the same. I don't want to take too much off. This, this one's pretty good. This one here, just the join needs to be straightened up. Um, it's that old triangle stretch thing. 
but I don't want to take so much off that it takes off the the width of it do you know what I mean like I don't want to make those strips at the side any smaller because I sort of want to keep them at that two and a half inch width so I'm just going to check on this side and you'll see they're a little bit straighter now um I'll just do this side here um yeah because um, keep the ruler reasonably straight just like that so I'm using my ruler as my straight edge not my um, board if that helps for some people um, a lot of people use their board but the board can can change so much that it's really not advisable to use that as your straight edge. Um, okay, so I've got them both joined together. Don't they look good? How cool is that? Lucky I didn't put them upside down because that would have been really annoying. Wallaby, wallaby, wombat, wallaby, good God. Um, kangaroo, red kangaroo. Now the next one is, it's going to be an echidna. I have these running around in my paddock and backyard. <laughs> Not everywhere, but they, they are there. So they're fairly shy. Um, so the next thing with this one is we're going to need to do top and bottom, side, side. Um, and again, we start with the peepers around it or the bow piping. So I need one, two, three, four. That's those. And we're going to take, yeah, they look cool, don't they? And not one of those triangles is perfect. <laughs> purposely so by the way <laughs> meant to be all right so i'm going to take this to the machine and then we're going to try and put some extra borders on if i've got enough otherwise i might have to cut some more so bring my camera over a little bit there we go so let me see what i've got here i've got one and i've got that one sorry i'm just counting sorry see how much of what I have that one that one I've got quite a few actually I've joined together that one that one huh. and that one alrighty cool balls cool 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 so let's do these first place that there Grab my first one, make sure you've got that raw edge facing towards the raw edge of the fabric, not inwards. Otherwise, you'll have a raw edge on the inside showing. We're going to move it over so I'm getting an eighth, an eighth of an inch. Again, be very careful not to stretch your fabric. Otherwise, you end up with this baggy thing. we're really only doing oh and I did the side didn't I oh booger I have to cut that off otherwise it'll look different so where's my little ripper hang on let me get my ripper oh, I've done it top and bottom every other time and this time I do it by the side silly woman all right So, stop it, that's that off, turn it around, let's try again, let's get that thread off there, bit of a shake, there we go, we can start, start on the top Michelle. Come on, don't be silly, be arguing with your mother. So this is how I talk to my machine all the time at my fabric. If you don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. Why wouldn't you talk to it? It knows exactly what you're thinking. That way. Alrighty. I thought I did it again then. So top, bottom, side, side. If you do it the other way around, like I almost did, it's going to look different. Even though it'll have the same edge, it'll be overlapping at the wrong spot. Like it'll be under instead of over. That sort of thing. 
One near the bottom. Uh, that one looks like it needs re ning 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 ning. I think I need to re iron this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just play, and get it to work, and then hold down. Any questions so far? Alright, so let's just trim those bits off. They might come in handy later, so don't throw them out yet until you, you've done it all. You might have to add on just a little bit somewhere along the line. Um, that one there is not sewn down. I just want to put a stitch in the end of that. Then, oops, a daze. I'm just picking something up and throwing it. There we go. Next one is the sides. Come on, baby girl. There we are. Um, it'll be like a, a small wall hanging or a or medium sized wall hanging and or a small throw. Um, I'm sort of thinking around about 50 by, what did I have written down there? Oh, I've covered it with stuff. Um, around about 50, 45, 50 square or something like that, maybe, roughly. The other side. So, what don't we do when we have triangles with the iron? We don't use steam. Don't use steam, don't use water because it loosens up the fibers. I had a very, very lovely, very informative teacher teach me these things. Um, a um, winter and um, I learned that very very early in the piece that um, if you want the fabric to stretch and move use steam to loosen up the fibers if you want it to um, starch it but not stretch it you don't want to stretch stretch it type thing then you need to um, Use starch, not um, not steam, and you don't use steam with with starch, and you don't use steam with um, Tilda Fix or Vliza Fix or any of those fusible webbing things. They're not advisable either. All right, um, now we need to just look at. I'll just move the camera down so you can see the mess. All right, here we go. So I'm just looking here where I'm sitting going okay what am I going to do here so I can go like that I could go like that top and bottom I'm just looking at the way the colors flow and then I'm going to need because they're only this way they're not going to go that way because I need to have one extra on either end so that I can have two on that so I'm going to take this off here do I even though I just sewn it down so that's going to come off there and go on the end of this one and I think I'll do it mm, 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 mm. maybe that way let's 
I'm getting away, mate. Um, so what's that question there? Um, I'm just loving those colours. They're good, aren't they, Gidget? Yeah, I'm going to, um, if I say I've got to organise those um, packs, those fat quarter things for you. Um, I'm also sort of umming and ahhing as to how much you're going to need because because there's no pattern for this, um, I'm not really 100% so sure. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I finished it and then I could say, yes, you'll only need two fat quarters of each colour or one of each colour or whatever, just so that I don't overdo it. All right, so this one can have mm -mm, that one on there. So that should give me enough to do the two sides. So let's just sew these two babies down. Um, so to pick those colours out, what I actually did was um, I I grabbed the like the um, the panels and I just went around and looked at what they had in them. And I noticed that each one of them have like a bluey gray. Um, so the blue and gray came into it. I noticed that there's a bright green with the, with the, the grass in the background. And also noticed there's the, the olivey green. So they both got in there. Um, I noticed that, sorry, that um, it had the cream and the white, like the lemony color in there, as well as, <clears throat> you know, it's also got the neutral sort of colors in there as well. So most of the panels have something like this in them. Um, even the kangaroos, they don't have, um, they're more in the reds tones, but they still have that creamy look to them. So they had the grass in there. Um, yeah, you'll just have a metre of each. Oh, Gidget, you should see. I'm going to show you guys when I finish doing this bit um, and what I've got over there, you freak. All right, so those two are done. Now, this is top and bottom. I am going to just move that over there. You get to see all my crap behind my machine. There we go. And I have got top this time. Yep. So I'm going to move it over halfway through that. Well, not halfway, but, you know, about... Um, oh, I might need to move it back a bit because it'll be too far. Let's go back here. Maybe there. I've got to make sure it fits. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's only just going to fit, so that's not too bad. So... This one looks more like a semi-perfect one. <laughs> You'd be rather proud of me, except for the fact that I'm not worrying about where my points are. Oh no, I've got issues. There's issues. Oh, there's an issue. Just cut that off. A little bit stuck there because I had the seam in the wrong way. Um. Oh, no, Alan. Okay. Release the hounds. There we are. I'll go back over here. Down. Try again. Over here. Oh. that one then we need to do oops it is that was a bit silly what happened there okay then I'll do the bottom one which I think I've buried over here somewhere I don't know it's just another thing of one I haven't sewn together that one there so I'm thinking I'll put that over that side so I don't know about you, but I talk to myself all day. Um, well, most of the day. Sometimes I even answer, which is scary. I know. Um, until a friend comes over, and then I even still talk to myself. <laughs> There's a friend in the room, <laughs> and I go, "So what? What was that?" <laughs> no, sorry, just talking to myself. Oh, <laughs> so the poor friends. Oh dear. 
Alright. Almost done. So what I'm going to do now is going to take it back over the cutting board and just trim up and flatten out, out this. So um, what machine are you using? Um, Debbie, this is a memory craft, a Gen Genomi memory craft 8900. Um, they don't make this one anymore, but they do have the 9450, I think, or 9400. <clears throat> It was, in its day, about three and a half, four grand's worth of machine. Um, I probably could still get one and a half for it, but it's, she's had a lot of work, my old girl. She's probably had enough work in her to last her a lifetime. All right, so I'm just finger pressing for the moment. I'm going to just make sure these are going the right direction. There we go. Now, let's get this under here. So, there it is. And I haven't trimmed yet, have you noticed? Because I want to make sure that this is sitting right before I go trimming. Because I might trim off, trim off, not trim off, trim off the wrong, wrong spot, the wrong amount. So, um... This also will help the seams to sit down. A little bit of starch. There we go. Get it that way. That's one. And this one. Um, sorry, I'm a bit quiet. Now, uh, I'll just dry that off a bit. It's a bit damp still. I don't want to cut it while it's damp. It still could spring back on me. All right. Take that out of the way. <sighs> did you make your ironing mat? And if you did, what did you use to make it? Yes, um, Julia, I, I did. Um, so you use a product called Insul Bright. It's I-N-S-U-L-B-R-I-G-H-T, I think. Insul Bright. And that is what you put in it as well as your wadding. Uh, make sure you only use wool or cotton, 100% cotton or wool. Um, and Insul Bright is what keeps it cold or hot so that's your that's your um your uh, insulation alrighty so just trim that little booger off there and what I did with mine oh, that was going to be nasty I had it on the wrong angle what I did with mine was I actually um, I got it quilted. This is before I had my machine. Do you buy it by the minute? Oh, yes, I've got it here in meterage. It's about $13 a meter, um, which is cheaper than buying the pre-pack. So if you want some, just send me one in a quick, send me a quick um, PM that you want, you know, half a meter or a meter. Um, and I'm happy to pop that in your next order. And then what I did was I went along and sewed halfway and then in the quarter, just straight lines so that I could fold it or fold it that way. It made it easier to fold because it sort of puts that extra seam and then I just bound it. So um, it's probably due for a new, like another cover, but you know, I can wash it too. Quite, you know, it's quite easy to, to wash. Um, okay, so 
I turn that around, I'll do the other side. Do to do, let's take that off the edge. Take the little boogaloos off. And in that. Alrighty. Look at that. That's not a real triangle. Yes, it is. It's just different. Nice, different, unusual. And they, they are, if I straighten that up, they are the same size as the centre. So I've done well. Thumbs up for me. All right, so now I can put the sides on. So let's go back to the machine. We're doing lots of back and forwards today. So we'll go back to the machine and we'll get this on and then we'll put on the, uh, on the end of that this one here. And then that's our first panel, um, first board um, row done and then next week we'll do the big ones yeah oh, move that over there because if I do a couple you know like one or maybe we'll do one tomorrow so someone sent me a message I've just got to see it sorry just sending a message going <sighs> I'm funny. <laughs> it's nice, different, unusual. So I've got my two longer ones that I made up before by adding those extra two on the end. And that is going to be long enough because I've added the extras on. But what I do need to make sure is that I don't have the same colour. Well, look, if I did, it's no big deal. Are you getting your steps in walking back and forwards? I don't exercise, Pat. That's a swearing. No. <laughs> um, exercise to me is just cruel. That's cruel and unusual behaviour. All right, so I might swap over to that one. That one looks, yep, that's long enough. So I can put that one there. And might turn it around. Yep, that one will do it. Bit of green on green, but she'll be right. You like that? She'll be right. All right. Now, just pop that there. Because I've done all my prep, you know, made sure it's all nice and reasonably straight, um, I'm not sort of having to worry um, about um, whether this is going to go out now. So it shouldn't. It shouldn't. If it does, I can always, like I say, starch it and um, reduce the movement in the fabric. But like, because we're moved, we're working with so many um, bias edges, like it's crazy amount of like stretch. This is just really stretchy. Um, it doesn't surprise me if it does. You know, I'm not going to jump up or down the screen if it goes south, but. Um, just deal with it although I could jump it up and down the screen <laughs> I have been known to do worse <laughs> no I haven't oh dear so I think Julie's going to come and visit I'm going to come and play Julie Donaghy should be nice a bit of company right there cut off turn around and that one down and let's see which end I want where mm -mm -mm. we're gonna go that way right so the white will be touching who cares I don't <clears throat> So I opened up the, the pack of, of one of these um, panels, you know, these these um, printed panels, um, because I'm cutting them all up into their panels rather than leaving them on the bolt, because I need the bolts for all these petite fabrics that have come in. So here I am, undoing it, cutting away, folding up, and then all of a sudden, one, I don't know if you can see it or not, can you see that writing? That's the writing. They've written on that. It says 147 or something like that. And I don't think that comes out of the wash, but they're written right in the middle of the panel. 
I'd say that's not clever, but I'll be getting me money back on that panel. Just saying. <laughs> what length stitch do you have my machine on? It is on um, 2.4 with this. If I was doing foundation piecing, I'd have it on about 1.5. But we're not. I don't know why I even told you that. Because we're not. <laughs> All right, let's cut that off. Yeah, no. Yeah, I know. Pat, it, it, like, no, definitely not joking. I couldn't, I found it this morning. I went, what the heck were they thinking? Um, so let's go take this over and trim it again so I can show you how I trim. Oh. And I also want to show you something else before we go to, um, not just the, the fabrics that I can see here. How rude writing on the fabric. I know, Debbie. Will starching help get your points together when doing hat or windmills? Is that the secret? Yeah, absolutely, Julie. Absolutely. Any of those things where so you've got all those um, bias edges, yeah, starching, absolutely, besides measuring. Measuring is a really important thing. You've got to make sure your measurements are really, really accurate. Um, once you know that they're accurate, starching is your best friend. You will be very, very surprised if you start starching. <clears throat> but um, other than Best Press, if you're going to buy it from the supermarket, um, which you can't get from Best Press, but if you do do that and buy it from the supermarket, make sure you buy like a black and yellow brand, um, something that's cheap. Don't buy anything expensive because it tends to work really well. Just remember that it could leave on black fabric, it could leave that little, um, whoops, it is the wrong one. Um, that little shiny thing that it leaves. All right. Um, yeah, so accuracy in cutting, your preparation with all those sort of windmills and things like that, accuracy in your cutting makes a huge amount of difference. All right, just making sure that's all folded under, down there. Move that out of the way because I'm going to starch, clear, clear starch, and it has sizing in it, which will help. So, so this feels nice and crisp now at the sides that I've already done. Sorry, someone sent me that message again. I'm just going to have a quick look. Didn't know you were doing live. Pause. Okay, when he comes back, I will come over. Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> no worries, Jules. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm going to just there there give it a second I'm going to try it because I have great deal of trouble getting my points to match yep um, I buy crisp it works well yeah crisp is another one I've, I've used that for years as well but I, I do like the best press now either either they work fine um, on black I try and use the best press definitely so it doesn't leave that shiny thing um, the what was I going to say? No, it's gone. Zip gone. Just like that. Just like that. Anywho, um, we'll get these done and I'll sew them all together and you'll see it as one big thingy and you'll appreciate my triangles in training. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say. With those um, triangles too, Julianne, um, points. Okay, so. When you've got your seams, you know how you're joining your seams. So um, say if I want to get, I want to have that seam there line up with the other one, right? And I want to make them line up. I have to have them when I've got them facing or, you know, coming across. So say if I wanted to make it like a zigzag, I've got them like that so that when they open out, they look, oh, this way, you silly woman. Oh, no, it won't do it because it's the wrong way around. So say if I'm wanting them to go like that, right? Sorry. Bring that here. Like a chevron -y type thing. I have to make sure that one seam goes one way and the other one goes the other way. And you have to butt them up. And I will show you how to do that. Just make sure I get them right. So, 
you butt them up when you get them together you lay them out like that it's hard because these are on an angle and you make sure that that butts up with that one I'm going to flip that over and when you hold your finger over the top of them the two of them you got if you can feel of that seam right there underneath that where my finger is I can't feel a gap in between them and I also can't feel it overlapping um, and you will feel that that sits nicely and that is exactly where you pin either either side of it or right there and you have to make sure that they've got that quarter inch um, quarter inch from here to here where you're going to sew so that that it can, can actually catch that that point okay um, but starching them definitely will help um, because uh, yeah it, it um, just takes away one extra element that can go wrong with um, with uh, bias seams that uh, bias edges alrighty so when you starch like I say leave it sit there for a few minutes go and boil the kettle or something and then come back you don't have to do it straight away let it soak in make sure your seams are heading in the right direction before you start that one is a little bit of for the moment there we go and yep so that one there Oops, days I'll pull on that it's joined no worries Julie anytime then I'm going to go over and do this side so that looks nice and straight don't worry about my points but that looks straight okay so that is giving me the urits there we go so nice and straight they're just sitting there happy it feels nice and crisp it's lovely next one The other thing too is if you use steam you can't get your hand underneath there like that because you'll end up burning yourself when you're not using steam you can actually get into it a little bit better I only use steam if I've got really really big creases that really need to come out like they are nasty nasty creases they're just being nasty nasty <laughs> All right, there we go. Bit of that and this one over here. It's just playing games. I can see it. Won't run for it. That one can go over there. That can go. There we go. And this iron, this little iron, this iron heats up like you've got no idea. They heat up really quickly. They do a fantastic job. Oh, look, I've got a seam there in the wrong direction. Very annoying. <laughs> All right. So, I am a total goober. Didn't you know that? <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to now trim off these oh, and stand up um, very important if you can stand up to stand up mm, that's a bit crooked but anyway she'll be fine now um, when you're cutting because it's safer if you're cutting and I'll tell you what I have a pet hate and poor old dotty she cops it from me because she she tends to leave her blade open so she'll have it sitting there and the blade will be up like that like like that and it'll, it'll be down there like that and I always go <laughs> because um, many years ago um, our teacher was telling us about her accident and someone in a class had let left one open like that 
and she reached across to grab something come back and cut right down right down through her arm so i always close mine i'm a bit of a nazi with the, the closing the, the blade sorry um needs to be closed so i just figure i'd rather not have the the damaged arm all right now i just need to take that it's got like a little peak there so i'm just going to take that off get off and i'm just going to go this side just check in so my my little peeper here has got thicker at this end don't know what happened doesn't matter i'm not unpicking it and i don't care let's move on <laughs> nothing to see here let's keep moving on all righty so I can see we're going to be fine. Uh, oh, no blade open. We are. Uh, we were taught to close ours, and now it's automatic. Yeah, absolutely. The blade. You, you never want that baby open. All right. So that is going to go and cop that. That is going to go there. Just so I can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, because if you've got someone, say, sitting next to you working and they don't know you've left the blade open, they reach across, they're going to lose part of their bleeding arm. Bleeding. Bleeding arm. <laughs> okay. So that actually should fit in there quite nicely if I don't do any silly moves. Yeah. I think it's gonna, I'm going to have a little bit of edge to cut off, but that's about it. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and then we've got one row done. Oh yeah, over there you go. Here, yeah, Idy. I'm going to get a workout today. And no, I'm not counting. Okay, there we are. Now, like I said, I could pin it, but I don't care enough. So I'm not pinning refuse oh i've just pulled out my thread how annoying and needle down um behind there uh, i think i actually stopped putting it behind there because it needs to miss it it cuts to the bone really quick yeah it did it actually cut right down to the bone she um <clears throat> she hit right down to the bone and it um opened her arm up Massive scar on her arm. Mm. Uh, I need to lock that. <sighs> I must have a small needle in. You know why I struggle with this? It's because I'm so used to automatic needle threaders. Now I don't have one. Like if it's not working, I, I struggle. There we go. It's only because I've got eyeballs on that it works. All right. Unlock. There we go. Come under there. Uh, especially being a new blade, if it's a new blade, we tend to um, put a lot of extra effort into, because um, we've been using such a blunt blade. Um, sorry, is the blunt blade. Blunt blade is the worst because we're putting in so much effort to push down and move, like to, to cut through the fabric because it's blunt that we don't actually realize that when we if we slip and you cut your finger or your you know your arm or whatever hand or someone else's you're putting so much extra pressure behind it because it's blunt which means you're going to make a worse cut on the person it's not going to be very nice or yourself Oh, we're nearly there. Woohoo! All right. I can't believe Gidget called me a goober. <laughs> All right. There we go. I'll probably, I'll probably have to just trim off the 
corners of this end triangle because it looks like it's too far out. And that's it. Cut that off. Give me a look at that. Let's see if I'm going to get away with it. Yeah, I will. Alrighty, let's go. Naughty Gidget. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, exactly. Let's go back over here We're on the home stretch of this and we'll cut this. So let's do this. Oh. I'm a you're a goober too. <laughs> Small one a mile away. I am. I'm a, I am a goober. Weirdo. All right. Didn't I press that before? No, I didn't. No, I can't have because I just sewed it off. Silly woman. All right, so that there, that there. We're going to trim up this across here. Just doing that. Put a little bit of breast for us on there. I could. I have been called worse things, so goobers, all right. I'm sure Gidget was using it as an idiom. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh no, I wouldn't have taken. Oh God, no, I'd take more than that to upset me. <laughs> it's a, uh, dear, made me laugh. It was a good one. Alrighty, so, and you can see with the pull of the triangle, it's going to be needed to be trimmed. You can see it there. See how much bigger it is, even though. It will be measured the same. Go figure. Let's get this going here. Nicely. Nice. Nice, different, unusual. So, using that one there and that bit up there, I can see that I need to trim off some of this. Alright, let's not take off too much, just in case. I reckon, or I'm reckoning, up here. That's straightish, straight, straight enough. Yeah, it's all good. Oopsie daisy. Uh, it looks like I've cut a million strips for the quilt as you go quilt I'm doing. Oh, really? It was, it was. Of course, Gidget. Didn't think, I wouldn't expect anything else but love and love and uh, cuddles from you. Now, I'm going to do a quilt. It's a bar yellow. And I'm going to do it on the long arm. So those who have a long arm, or even a mid arm, the long arm's better. So it'll be a quilt as you go by jello, but it'll be on the long arm. So I do apologize for those who don't have a long arm. Um, all right. Oh, I missed a scene. Little booger. Let's go back over here. Oh, you little son of a sea dog. Let's get in there and get that little booger. It is a lot part of the strips and quilts you're going down there. That looks great when finished. Yeah, I bet. All right, so I'm just going to take this over to the machine and just sew that seam down. I've missed the corner. Um, I'll grab you, bring you over here. Come with me. It's because I was talking and not concentrating. Do this again. E -e 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 -e. Must catch seam. Hmm. You can't wait for it. Yeah. Gosh, short arm like my legs. Like my legs. <laughs> Yeah, the short arms, uh, short arms, uh, mid arm they call them. Uh, they're really good, the mid arms. Alrighty, we're in. Just, but that'll do. That'll do, Donkey. That will do. Alrighty, so let's take it back over here and have a bit of a look at it. 
have some seriously awesome, seriously awesome stuff going on over here. Look at this, baby. Now, it is far from perfect. I'm going to grab you. Um, sorry, let's see my Saturday face. Let me turn this around. There we go. So there's the Wombi bat. Oh, there's the cord. And we've got all the wonky triangles. There they are. Look at them all. Woohoo. Look. Oh my God. There's no points. Um, but how cool is that? Sorry, it's falling off the table. I have a massive table in my room. It's huge. Huge. Um, but we use it for painting as well as everything else. Obviously, the paint's dry. So look at that. That looks cool. That I'm liking. Do you need to trim here? You can see it's sticking out. It's annoying me just looking at it. Um, but that looks really good. I'm happy with that. Now, you ready? <laughs> All right. All right. You ready? Set. Can you see that? Can you see that fabric I have to, like, put onto bolts? You ready? Look. Look at this. Look at it. <laughs> so, that's the stuff I've already done. This is the stuff I have not yet done. Can I just tell you that I'm, if I, if I don't see another piece of batik today, it'll be too early. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some seriously nice colours there. Um, and you'll get a good look at them on Monday. Um, but look at that. Look at that. Look at that purple. I have been busy. So, yeah, you haven't seen me because I've been head down, bottom up doing all these. Um, but, um, yeah. So there you go. So that's that. So next week I might do the big one. I think I will. And um, then it's just a base, like just basically we'll go and um, do the, the three small ones for the bottom of it and we'll join it all together the following week. All right. So, yeah, there's some really nice purples. I, I noticed you had to change my, tens my tension when sewing batiks. I had to change my yes yeah you yeah if you're um yeah you do you just got to adjust accordingly because everyone's machine's going to be a little bit different when i'm on the long arm i have to change it all the time with the batiks especially if it's on the back and i have to change the thread because it likes because it's got so much sizing in it oh yeah there's some teal there um because there's so much sizing in the um batik I find that the thread sits on top of the fabric rather than bury itself in. So, mm. but anywho, <laughs> all right, guys, see you later. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you on Monday night. Bye.